<laughs> so this is kind of, I know this look is kind of creepy. It is what it is. Um, man, this was freaking hilarious. So I drink so much water now. I mean, we're talking two gallons a day, most days, um, that occasionally I have to stop. Um, and so in this case, it was a, a rest stop, really convenient. I can just pull in, do my thing. Um, it's like 6.46 in the morning, so it's still dark. Um, and I was like, you know, instead of just protein drinks and water, which is what I do on road trips, I'm like, oh, let me get something special. I'm here at this rest stop. So they have a coffee machine. I don't drink coffee, but I'm like, oh my God, hot chocolate would be amazing. I never get to have hot chocolate. <laughs> so I get the hot chocolate, but a cup doesn't drop. So it basically just pours boiling water and whatever they're gonna mix in with the chocolate just straight down the drain. <laughs> so there was a number on there to call so I called it and but it sounded like it was somebody's like private cell phone so I did leave a message with them and I'm just and just to let them know and just to, I'm curious about the pro process of getting a refund if that's even possible so you know just part of your road adventure is one of the things I love about being on the road that's what I get for spending money on something other than gas see See? Anyway, um, yeah. On the road again, baby. Hey! So this should be the second part of the uh, war journal for IWE. So got here. Got here in plenty of time. Had lunch with Tim uh, where we just chopped it up. And now I'm here at the venue, obviously. they got They got a chance to set up last night. Last time they had a setup day of, and Danny and the crew were worked incredibly hard. They worked hard this time too. It's just they were able to get most of the stuff up last night. So now basically just the entrance and the electronic stuff uh, needs to be wired up. But beyond that, we're good to go. So it's 2:42. So it's a few hours before showtime. I like to be here early, um, as anybody who knows me knows. And um, it's going to be a great one tonight. Some changes are taking place. The Renegade Sisters. Um, who were supposed to be in a tag thing, got booked at AEW for dark tapings. So that's a change. Um, and then a couple people who have like COVID things, so they're not going to be here. So I imagine I'll do a little more of the helping to move stuff around and make sure things are making sense department. Again, I don't book, um, but I do come up with, um, you know, sometimes solutions to problems or give Tim options and that kind of thing. So I'll be curious to see. Obviously, the report tonight will be after everything was said and done, and I'll be able to let you know how the shows went. Uh, I do know that there are 200 tickets, two, more than 200 tickets already pre-sold for this show. Tim was initially worried um, because of COVID and other things that the show was going to be down. But now, when you factor in a walk-up... This might be the biggest show that they have done to date, um, or at least on par with the biggest shows that they've done. Now, they've gone as high as 288, so if they can hit that magical 300, that'll be a big deal. And, of course, the main match is going to be uh, Joe Black against Anthony Henry, which is still on like Donkey Kong. And it turns out Drew Adler, I guess, who was going to do WrestleMerica show, something happened with that WrestleMerica show, so now there are other people available, so it's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot to talk about later on, but... I'm just, um, something I really love is the crew here, is they just get it done. I mean, all these chairs, let, let me just show you. By the way, all those pieces of paper are for seats that are already bought and paid for and reserved. They got the setup going. So you can see uh, they're in really good shape as far as attendance, which is really exciting. Um, I'm really excited for the guys and the women to perform in front of a energetic, great crowd. It's very cold here compared to where I was in Florida. Um, but I imagine people want to get out of that cold and they want to sit here in a nice building and watch a great show. So hopefully that's what we're going to give them. But I'm going to have a lot more to report on later tonight. Cool? Cool. What's going on? 
how do you like this dynamic background? This is <laughs> with the like harsh light on me and it blacked out behind me and the curtains. It definitely has the like, I am currently, I mean, it has the total like hostage video look. Well, it's Sunday morning. Um, I'm going to make this part of the second um, wrestling war journal um, for I guess January 2022, this trip. Um, so IWE was last night. <clears throat> I got a bunch of thoughts on it. Um, I think I'll just be, I'll just be blunt, right? From a crowd standpoint, um, I don't know how comfortable he's going to. Well, I've already started talking. I think Tim would have been happy with 200. In light of COVID and all this other stuff, um, the numbers were going to be down. I thought it was telling, for example, that Southern Honor drew a good crowd. I think 350 is a really, really good crowd. Um, I'm sure, you know, that Zicky Dice show where they had all these bold proclamations about what they were going to draw and what they were going to stream, I think at this point... Zicky Dice and company understand that they're fucking in trouble with that show. In trouble. There's just no two ways around it. But I think Southern Honor did really good. I think 350 is really fantastic. Um, and so Tim was probably expecting around two. Now, they had pre-sold. See, I get to see these numbers, right? They had pre-sold more than 200 seats. So, I, you know, at that point, you knew they were going to be okay. And then people just kept coming in throughout the show. I think the final number ended up being 258. I could be wrong about that. It could be higher. But I know it was at least 258. So from that standpoint, the show was uh, exceeded expectations. I think the show itself, um, and just being completely honest, like I'm still feeling out like how much hands-on to be um, with certain people and... Um, so last night I deferred like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give them a little space instead of being all up in their shit. I mean, I still did the usual, make sure that people weren't stepping on what they wanted to do in the main event and making sure we weren't having repeated finishes and just getting a general sense of what people were going to do story-wise and that kind of thing and making sure people were sticking to times. All that kind of stuff generally happened, but I think uh, a number of the matches really fell short in my opinion, especially in the first half of the card. And some of it is just people not, I, I, I mean, there was crazy stuff that happened. The second rope broke in the second match. So the metal piece, and I've, I've had this happen to wrestling rings before, the metal piece that the turnbuckle hooks onto snapped. So you couldn't have a second rope. So that's already going to create weirdness, not only because people are going to use it second row, but everything is different. If you're hitting the corner buckle, now it's hitting you in the upper back and not dispersing the impact to the middle as well. So that's weird. You hit the ropes. It's weird because you're used to that middle rope catching you and help sending you back. So people were definitely thrown off by that. <clears throat> there's no doubt. But then there's also sort of basic storytelling stuff. And basic wrestling stuff that I think a lot of people don't keep in the front of their mind um, often when they're working. So I'm going to talk about that more in full disclosure. So yeah, I think a bunch of the match stuff didn't work. I think big moments definitely happened, and most of them really worked. Um, I think the personnel that they have at IWE is really great. Um, I'm talking like j from staff to the people who are obviously running things to... The wrestlers themselves. I think in that regard, it's fantastic. Um, there's no bullshit in the locker room. It was cool to see Anthony Henry because I've so he and I don't see each other often, but we've seen each other at sort of like sort of weird milestones in his career. And just hearing him talk and seeing him and Joe Black go out there and just beat the piss out of each other, and then seeing Tim's reaction to the card as well. Um, he's a guy who definitely cares about what's going on and is intimately familiar with the matches and watches his show and is participating um, in doing things production-wise for the show as well as being an integral part of things. So 
Um, it was great to have Huck in the house. Huckabee was there. He bought a ticket, but you know he was there to just check out the show. And so he and I got to talk quite a bit and have a good time on that kind of shit. Um, I didn't I, I, originally the plan was <clears throat> David Ali. Um, I was he was gonna stay in my room and I was gonna drive him back to Orlando. But it turns out he and uh, Heather Monroe have a gig in Memphis, so they just went straight there last night. <clears throat> so I'm going to be going home. I had a thing this morning. I already took care of it. It's awesome. It's 1030 right now. Um, then I'm going to have brunch with Tim and company, and then I head back. I don't think I'm going to make it back in time for the pro wrestling action show in Sanford, Florida, which is too bad because now I've missed two in a row. And I really like that show, and I'm really rooting for it. But um, the flip side of that is I'll be able to put out reports. I may have time to do it this morning. I did watch Hard to Kill, um, the first the first pay-per-view from wrestling this year, right? Um, and it's Impact. And it was fucking good. Man, you kind of knew that thing was going to be good. Because the just the matchups they were making and the sort of general atmosphere of it, I thought it's the best impact thing that I've seen. I thought it was better for Bound for Glory. I thought it was better than the one where Omega beat Swan. I thought this was their best concerted effort, top to bottom, on a pay per view that they have had in a very long time. I and I know people are saying like, well, Impact, dude. If you've got, put it this way. <clears throat> If you have like three or four wrestling shows that you engage with, right? I mean, if you're not watching Dynamite, I don't know what the fuck. Like, just don't be a fucking wrestling person. <laughs> um, should be watching Dynamite. You should be watching SmackDown, right? To me, those are like the two. Beyond that, it's different things, right? If you love AEW, you're going to watch Rampage. I would suggest Rampage should be one of those top three, but whatever. I can understand people get tribal when it comes to wrestling shit. Fucking lame as hell. Um, you got Dynamite. You got SmackDown. I would watch Impact before NWA. I would watch Impact before Raw. I would watch Impact whatever. But especially the pay-per-views, um, Hard to Kill was fantastic. I definitely recommend it. I have saved watching the Saturday Night Battle for the Belts and trying not to hear about it, but that's almost impossible with the people who text me and stuff. I'm going to watch Battle for the Belts when I get home tonight and put in my report for that, and then we'll just start fresh for the week. But, um, yeah, IWE was fun last night. I, I A quick note um, that... I'm waiting until the last possible second before I go back. Um, if you want to request a ballot, do it quickly. Um, yes, I will be able to make sure that you get a ballot um, up until close to midnight. But I know, and I noticed that there were still six or seven people who haven't voted. I will say um, there are still at least three categories that are very much in play at this point and a few more that conceivably could go one way or the other if everybody voted in a block i kind of sound like those like nfl playoff if so and so loses and if so and so gets a tie or loses then and you win going out then you could get in the playoffs i know it sounds like that and it really is kind of like that so uh there are two or three that i would say that are really in play and then technically five or six that could go one way or the other if people like somehow voted in lockstep for one or the other. So, um, yeah, get your ballots, of course, as early as possible, and then uh, vote. So this is going to be the, I'm going to put it together with the other two videos, and this will be our Wrestling War Journal about IWE. Um, I'm excited about the next show, March 12th, this show marked a difference in IWE. Every show is sort of, um, they learn something or they do something new. And this one was, they did a very good job of promoting a couple of big things for their next show, right? 
I, I like being a part of IWE because they're still on that learning curve and it continues to improve. Um, and that crowd is as crazy as a thing. I mean, you know, when Joe Black is having to fight an audience member uh, before his match uh, or right at the start of his match, you know, it's crazy. It's wild, right? Yeah. We're going to talk about more about that on full disclosure, but that happened. Um, it was just a wild and crazy show. And, um, and a wild and crazy weekend, as all of these do when I engage with the wrestling. See you later. Please acquiesce to their demands. See what I'm saying about the hostage thing? Mm.